Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChessTrading.com and today is Friday, November 23rd, 2018. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. May this year bring you prosperity and happiness, of course. Having said that, hit the like button. Um, we are looking again at the stocks approaching October 2018 lows. So. We will look at S&P 500 futures in more detail, and it's not looking great, to tell you the truth. Sector is already in a bear market. There's a bunch of them, financials, industrials, materials, and energy, communication sector, the new sector, XLC, maybe also in a bear market. We'll look at some other ones, information technology, and QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, is approaching outright bearish levels. and. We'll look a bunch of enormous capitalization stocks that are making new lows for the move. So junk bonds again are sending warnings to stocks and the opposite is happening to the investment grade bonds which are actually gaining and bonds ooh, also um, are gaining. All right, we'll look at also at gold and gold miners, and the price, price action still means may mean that we're going to see a uh, move lower for the dollar. Then we'll go into this new section, <laughs> being on the right side of the market. And if you have heard, uh, I'm going to actually quote, there was a at least one hedge fund manager that lost probably the entire... Uh, entirety of his funds money and his clients money due to uh, unprecedented natural gas and oil volatility now we will get to this right side of the market business and um, navigating being on the right side or the wrong side of the market so you, you really need to know what you're doing in case such a uh, rogue wave as they call it hit and again, cryptos hit new lows. So please do subscribe to this channel and please hit the like button. Okay, so let's start our normal presentation. Here is again S&P 500, ETF SPY. Uh, now, this week was relatively short. There was no trading uh, on Thursday. Uh, Friday was a short day, so we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm guessing. So we got Monday 19th, Tuesday the 20th, and um, Wednesday 21st, and Friday the 23rd. Relatively short day, but relatively eventful. So here what I want you to take a look at is this breakdown below this red indicator line. Now again, you can find out more about these lines on the chart, and I'm talking about this green, the blue, the red, and the yellow line, lines, rather, by going to mastercharstrading.com, and you can look for information there. You can sign up uh, for alerts and indicators. So the indicators is what I'm referring to. These lines here are uh, programmed in and they're mathematically calculated. So what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing a breakdown uh, below this support level currently at 268 and they move towards this lows, uh, towards the October lows. Notice how the indicators catch the price action quite well. Now let's just go to futures, S&P 500 futures. Here it is. Here they are rather on the uh, trading view uh, ES1 exclamation point. So these are continuous futures. So here I am seeing a not a, at all encouraging action. Uh, you can see that we're approaching uh, fresh lows and at the same time they're also bearish levels. We are like a percentage point away basically from um, outright bearish levels. If we break below 2599, I think we could easily just collapse. Uh, how much we can collapse? Well, we can do a very conservative move and the price, so we can see that the move from 
this high here from November 7th, November um, 8th highs is about 7.5%. So we can easily um, kind of extrapolate for a move down of similar magnitude. So this is called a measured move. And we're looking at a breakdown to around... <clears throat> 2380 so and you know 2375 this is a kind of conservative sort of move and uh, nothing out of the ordinary basically so if this does occur um, you know obviously the stock markets are going to be many of them are already in the bear markets as very quite a bit of foreign markets are pretty much vast majority of the world are in bear markets. Uh, the S&P 500 is hanging on by some thin thread, and we'll go into details about which sectors are just not looking great. So here I wanted to show again this resistance on the four-hour charts, and I mentioned this uh, a couple of times actually. So let me show you what I mean. And this is S&P 500 futures. Again, I don't normally trade intraday. In other words, I don't look at minute or hour charts. I usually look at daily charts. But with S&P 500 futures, to trade on daily charts, you need a very large trading account. So here it is. Same thing, S&P 500 futures on a four-hour chart. Uh, on November 7th, you can see clear resistance right there where I'm hovering. Uh, you can see that the price came up to this blue indicator line. Again, you can find out more about these lines at MasterChessTrading.com. They're calculated. They're, I'm not making them up. This is a mathematical uh, indicator, and you can add it to your chart, and you can trade it uh, on your chart as well. So you can see that the price came up to the uh, 28.16 level. 28. Well, actually, it was back. Uh, back then, it was. Let me see. 2818 level and you can see that it collapsed you know basically was rejected there this is called rejection from then on you can see that we could short them at the red indicator line and new lows are being made and uh, basically we close at fresh lows for the move this is showing um, you know not a lot of willingness to buy stocks by the various investors and traders are pretty much selling them now again i'm right this instant waiting for a breakdown below 25.99 and i want to see a close below 25.99 then if we see a bounce back towards 26.85 levels it will be a perfect opportunity to open a short in other words to place bearish bets uh, alternatively, if you have actual holdings, uh, for example, of stocks, S&P 500, SPY, or Dow Jones, so the same goes here. If we break below this yellow indicator line, currently at 259.79 for S&P 500 ETF SPY, then that would be pretty much a bearish signal, and I will wait for a bounce towards 268 levels towards the red line and then I would sell it there I would short it obviously uh, you need to also read the price section but overall this is sort of my plan of action right this instant I still think that there's a possibility that the market can right itself and continue higher but as we will uh, continue to delve more into uh, sector analysis we will see that there are some really important sectors that are failing and also very important stocks that are failing. All right, so some of the sectors that are already in a bear market, uh, we can see are financials, industrials, materials, and energy. Pretty significant. Uh, a new sector that was recently created also known as communication services, uh, also known as XLC. 
I don't have enough data because I need 250 trading days of data to make a decision whether or not the security is in a bull or bear market. But just the way the be behavior of this particular ETF, XLC, it looks like it's already in a bear market. But the most important one is, of course, information technology, XLK, uh, also known uh, basically as QQQ. So let's look at some of those individually and let's look at some of the uh, already bearish sectors. So here's XLB, basic materials. Uh, this one broke down a while back, uh, as far back as October 9th of this year. And I sent to my subscribers to avoid it. Some subscribers are already thinking about shorting and notice beautiful price action right there on 9th of November. Price came up above the red line and crossed below the uh, red line. And this is basically where I would short another opportunity on the 16th and 19th of November. I am not currently shorting because S&P 500 itself is still in a, well, very weak bull market. So I will wait for a breakdown for S&P below this yellow line, currently 259.79 a close below that line before I begin opening short positions. So I just showed XLB basic materials in a bear market starting from October 9th. Another one is industrials, of course, the same thing. We see a breakdown here on the 23rd of October and I think it's now in a bear market. In other words, uh, the trend has changed to down. Energy, XLE, uh, also broke down on 24th of October. And notice uh, how nicely it is. Uh, for example, here is one. If you are an aggressive trader and you are okay shorting, then uh, here on the 7th and 8th of November, beautiful opportunity with a fresh low. So to short here. And then financials, XLF, I think this one is really important sector, so also broke down back on October 11th. Uh, and then you can see uh, that, again, if I was trading, I would short it right there on 12th of November because it's a nice big bounce back. But some aggressive traders will, will short it immediately. So those are the uh, four outright bearish sectors. XLC, communication, uh, communication services sector, I think also is in the bear market. Now, I don't have enough. You can see that there are no lines being calculated. That's because there is not enough data. And this one is only, it only started trading in June of this year. So we need 250 days of data for me to become... Um, you know, so that I, I have enough information to uh, the indicators for the indicators to work. But of the from the top, which is right there on 24th of July till the day before yesterday, we saw an 18.7 percent drop. So I think it's pretty safe to say that if I had 250 days of data, I think this would be already in a bear market, such as, for example, for financials XLF. You can see that breakdowns below the yellow line. So the same thing would go for XLC. I think it's in a bear market. And this is a huge chunk of the S&P 500. So let me show you what I mean. So information technology I'll get to in a second, but communication services is about 10% of the economy. You got industrials, I already showed XLI, energy, materials, and financials. So we have 14% Another 10%, that's 24%. Another almost 10%, that's 34%. Another 5%, about 40%. Another 2%. Almost over 40% of the stock market is an outright bear market. Now let's look at information technology, which is also known as XLK. So here is Excel, oh sorry, XLK. And notice that it already touched the yellow line here on 20th of November. So it is looking really bad. Uh, a 
lot of big stocks are in here in XLK, for example, Apple. And here's Apple. Notice where Apple is going. Apple is approaching outright bearish levels. Apple is very close to bearish levels. We're, let me see, a, uh, about 4.5% to 5% away from outright bearish levels. And you know for stocks, especially for Apple, you know, it moves quite a bit. You could see a drop of 4% in a day sometimes. So, not a good sign. Uh, you got QQQ, which is very similar composition to XLK, also very close to a bear market. You can see that the yellow line, uh, again, you can find out more about this line that message has trading, but this, to me, this is a line in the sand. If we see a close below this line at 156 currently, then I'm just not trading this one. And here's, for example, IWM, uh, Russell 2000. Uh, so on this one, I already sent to my subscribers to avoid on October 24th. And if you are aggressive, you can short here on November 2nd, 5th, possibly on November 9th. Notice that you would have been already successful. I think a new low is about to be made, honestly. So be super careful about stocks out there right now. All right, let's continue to some of the big stocks, Apple, Google, Nvidia, and ExxonMobil, the ones that they monitor. So I already showed Apple. Here's Apple again. Um, not looking great. I think it's approaching bearish levels. I would avoid if I would avoid Apple if it closes below 164. Um, pretty much. So here's Google. And it's an enormous company and it's already in a bear market. See right there. There's the breakdown on the 29th of October. Not a good sign. Facebook. Breakdown occurred even earlier. There's the breakdown on 17th of September of this year. And from then on, I basically sent to my subscribers to avoid it. Notice what happened afterwards. Big drop. Uh, so, yes, you need to know when to cut your losses. And I guarantee you, you will have losses in trading. So notice that after the alert to avoid another 20% drop for Facebook. <clears throat> um, let me see what else I wanted to cover. Uh, NVIDIA, NVDA. Uh, I don't, tr I haven't traded NVIDIA personally, but it's a nice um, kind of way to illustrate of what's kind of trend trading is all about. So here it is, the breakdown on 26th of October, basically a bearish indication, a bounce, and I would short it right there on the 2nd of November. It was a huge move down for NVIDIA, and notice that it's a 37% drop despite very positive earnings. So again, fundamental analysts sometimes just, you know, I, I'm not even sure what fundamental analysts do, but this is what, the, you know, they, they analyze this earnings, I'm guessing, and notice the earnings were very positive, and it means absolutely nothing. As I keep saying, you should ignore everything but the price. And maybe look at volume occasionally, but the price is by far the most important. So we got ExxonMobil as well, and actually ExxonMobil just hit fresh low. And here's XOM, one of the biggest companies in the world. Chappy, obviously, uh, some successful trades. The latest uh, alert was a failure because now we're basically closing or getting really close to bearish levels. Um, and I'm sending to my subscribers to avoid it for now. Anything can happen in the future, but I would avoid it for now.
Okay, and uh, let's briefly look at the world markets. So let's look at Europe. Here's VGK. European stock markets are in a bear market. European stock markets became bearish as early as 25th of June of this year, 2018. And from then on, basically, we just look at shorting them. Uh, now we are very close to fresh lows. This is a bearish security. Uh, Japan, EWG, a recent addition to the bear markets. Also, there is the alert to my subscribers to avoid on 10th of October and a big drop afterwards. So this is another avoid and or possibly short. And here are the rest of the world as emerging markets. Some of the developed markets like Canada and some of the European markets are also in a bear market. I'll show you in just a second. But here's emerging and emerging markets became bearish on Ju uh, June 27 of this year, 2018. From then on, basically, we're looking only to short and uh, all of the successful trades you can see, or the successful possibilities you can see, uh, downward facing arrows. So overall, emerging markets, European markets, Japanese markets, here's Canada, EWC. Uh, it was holding on until relatively recently, but then we see a breakdown on actually 10th of October and it just collapsed. Here's Mexico, EWW. Um, same thing, 24th of October avoid and just collapsed afterwards. So. I don't see any turnaround in the stock markets currently. What I do see is a deterioration of uh, current posture even further. I cut my exposure to the various, uh, or rather in my various uh, trading and um, retirement accounts to 20% stocks, 80% cash. I have no bonds. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you do trade uh, commodities or Bitcoin, then you need to allocate appropriately. But if you are simply just have two options, stocks and bonds, then uh, or the three options, stocks, bonds and cash, then in this case, I have 20% large cap stocks and 80% cash currently. This can change, obviously, in the future. Okay, let's continue to the bonds. So let's first look at junk bonds as they correlate highly with the stock market and junk bonds just made a fresh low on Friday. So junk bonds, uh, and if you listen to my previous videos, I have been talking about junk bonds uh, for a long time. You can see that the breakdown occurred likely as early as January of, of this year, but surely as early as 2nd of February of this year. You can see there is a breakdown right there below this yellow indicator lines. Again, find out more about them at mastersharestrading.com and sign up. You can have the same indicator lines on your chart. So from here on, we made a low, and then bounce towards the red line and I would short here if I was trading. I wasn't trading junk bonds. But uh, another option is to just simply avoid. So I had absolutely no junk bonds. At, at the, before I had a little bit of junk bonds here, but now I have no, no junk bonds. So another bounce towards the red line and another opportunity to short. So another dead cat bounce. Bearish security behavior as new lows and uh, lower lows and lower highs are being made. Another bounce towards the red line right there, 27th of August. Another opportunity to short. Another opportunity to short right there on the 1st of October. If you're an aggressive trader, then you can even short at the yellow line. But beautiful, enormous moves in our favor. 
So this is what I mean by being on the right side of the trade. I'm not trying to find the bottom in a bearish security. Got that? I'm not trying to find the bottom in a bearish security. I'm not trying to find the top in a bullish security. I'm simply trading according to which way the security is going. If the security is going down, then I will trade according to the way it's going. I'll, in other words, I'll be looking to sell it or to short it. So junk bonds uh, correlate highly with the stock market. And this is not a good sign when high yield bonds uh, basically collapse. Stock market could be next. Behavior of uh, high high grade bonds uh, could be indicative of a flight to safety. Now, once again, this is TLT, 20 plus year treasury bond fund. So this is a safe, quote unquote, as it gets. Um, here I will basically look for a bounce towards 118.16 this red line and maybe we'll short it but i want to look at bond b-u-n-d as well so here is b-u-n-d which is also known as euro bond kind of like an equivalent of european european equivalent of tlt sort of uh, before here on August in August 8th um, you know I don't trade this one because it's not a really tradable instrument in the United States but you can see that basically we see a breakout above the blue here we have it looks like a turnaround they break down below red but overall notice how right there I'm gonna zoom in on this price action it's just really telling how nicely the price action gets caught by my indicators again find out more at masterchesttrading.com but you can see there was no close below the yellow line so as we continue further we can see a price appreciation and an attempt notice again right there on the 8th of november price touched the red indicator line you can have them on your chart and trade by yourself right now we're approaching again notice how nicely it touched the indicator line and looks like we're trying to break out maybe we want to start you know if you're in Europe then that's one of the things you may want to consider quote-unquote investing in I do not recommend investing I recommend trading because if you're investing you sometimes get stuck with a losing trade so overall bonds are not doing great in the sense of they're not helpful uh, for the stocks right now if bonds BUND breaks out and if TLT breaks out then maybe this is the true flight to safety finally all right let's look at gold and dollar so here's XAU USD this is all daily charts obviously so XAU USD or gold futures makes no difference. Um, probably as early as um, 25th of June, but definitely uh, as late as 6th of July of this year, this is definitely a bearish security, a bearish behavior. So we need to act appropriately, and we actually did that. We went ahead and we short gold right there. Uh, 26th of October, also GDX, uh, alert for GDX, let me actually pull it up, GDX was also sent, two alerts actually right there, one on 17th of October, one on 24th of October, with a decent gain, uh, about 6-8%, to and again, if you're um, doing options, you know that this is a decent size gain. So XAU USD, uh, XAU USD. Um, this latest bounce, maybe it's not yet done. I think we may see uh, a retest of twelve thirty-seven here. 
DXY, on the other hand, basically opposite of gold, obviously. Um, it could just break out higher. I mean, this is a bullish security, so a pullback for the dollar, uh, especially towards the, you know, 94.15 levels, then that would be a very interesting opportunity potentially to buy it. But overall, the way gold is behaving, I think I would personally wait a little bit and see if we see a retest of these highs here from October uh, highs, 26 highs, and then maybe we'll uh, look for a shorting opportunity again. All right, now let's look at something which should probably be a part of every trader um, education. And here is what I am referring to. Of course, this week, optionsellers.com, this uh, gentleman by name uh, James Cordier. So anyway, so there was a big, um, long apology from this gentleman because he had a multi-million dollar hedge fund that was basically wiped out uh, due to this chart. So being on the correct side of the trade, which is very important, I wanted to show this quote. Uh, it's... You know, if you read Jack Schwager's Market Wizards, then you, you need to understand what does it mean to be on the right side of the market. And you really just need to be flexible and open-minded. So here on this chart, and let me show you my thinking, the way I, I look at these charts. As early as September of this year, I had no doubts that natural gas was in a bear market. In fact, I shorted it. This arrow right there is my trade, uh, my trade on the downside. There was another trade on the downside. I was shorting natural gas. Then we see this big rally from uh, September lows. And finally, right there on uh, 3rd of October 2018, we see a breakout. So to me, this is a no-brainer. This means that there is a turnaround, and now the natural gas will continue higher. So I actually sent an alert to my subscribers right there on October 8th of this year. There's an up arrow where I'm hovering. And hopefully some of them actually took the trade. Then I saw another opportunity right there on 16th of October, and I sent another alert to buy, not to sell, to buy natural gas. Uh, natural gas meandered around for a little while. I was a little worried. Uh, here I was less worried uh, a few days later, about uh, 31st of October. And then finally, look at this enormous gap, which basically was uh, most likely what wiped out his uh, fund, this gentleman's fund, that occurred on 5th of November. And you know that the movements in futures are multiplied by leverage. And this gap from overnight gap from, uh, let me see, from 2nd of November, or this was a weekend gap as well. So from 2nd of November until 5th of November, the price gapped up uh, over 5%. And in futures markets, this, this is an enormous move and uh, leveraged move it continued higher on the 9th of november a new high was made and you can see another high the next day and another high the next day and an enormous move the next day basically a blow off top and then you know fell fell back but the overall gist of this matter is that 
from the time that I sent my alerts to buy this uh, wild security, and again, if you're a trader, you know that natural gas is wild. So you have to be kind of prepared for this large gaps, and you need to take that into consideration. A 51% move on the futures uh, basically wiped out uh, this guy's fund. So right now, what am I looking at? I'm looking at natural gas as a bullish security. There was an opportunity uh, on, let me see when this happened right there. Not, a, not an ideal opportunity, I don't like this candlestick, but if you were nimble on 15th, 16th of November, you probably could have gotten in around $4.03 or here, right there, for another nice pop higher. But right now, I'm basically waiting for a move uh, towards $4 and maybe a bottoming pattern and then a, a rush higher. Uh, you know, such enormous moves uh, don't happen that often. This is literally one of those uh, rogue waves. But being on the right on the correct side of the market is, is being able to see where the price is going and in this case it was a no-brainer because i'm using my own indicators again you can find out more about them at master chess trading and just sign up there for a free trial let's continue to crude oil uh, he also uh, also said that he was uh, trading oil and natural gas futures now natural gas futures i do not do any fundamental analysis i don't really care about the world events or rather to a degree i care about it but the truth of the matter is that everything that was already uh, written thought uh, everything is already reflected in the price and the price did not lie right there i sent an alert to my subscribers on uh, 2nd of november 5th of november right there and you can see that the drop afterwards uh, this was a short in other words to sell to place bearish bets and the drop afterwards was an enormous almost 20 percent drop that actually continues to today Again, unprecedented uh, because of the various world events. But how can you predict the world events? You can't. And this is why I don't really care about the world events that much. And I simply look at the price of the chart. It is obvious in this chart that um, I, I did not want to be buying it here. And I, uh, I want to be on the correct side of the trade. And the correct side of the trade, the right side of the trade, uh, here in November of 2018 is on the downside of oil you can see a obvious direction to the downside up to you know recently uh you know in mid-october here i was thinking maybe it will pop higher but notice that on the 23rd of october a price broke below this blue line and then right there on the 24th of october there was a rejection at the blue line here I was already a little concerned, so I didn't really do anything here. Uh, and then at late November, late October, early November 2017, you can see a collapse. So being on the right side of the trade, being able to manage your risk, uh, being able to admit mistakes and move on with your life. So I, I'm really kind of feeling bad for uh, this gentleman from Option Sellers. But uh, this is one of those things that really need to be uh i don't know maybe shown to all people who are attempting to trade stocks and especially trade uh, with other people's money so be on the right side of the trade and also have the right tools you can see that there all i'm doing is i have four lines here this is all i do i'm looking at these four lines and if the lines are telling me to buy, I will buy. If the lines are telling me to sell, I will sell. I, I'm not going to double guess my stuff. So it works really well. And, you know, I, I'm getting really good uh, feedback from my subscribers. So again, sign up.
Let's briefly look at the collapse in the cryptocurrencies. Here is Bitcoin versus US dollar. Uh, price is behaving in accordance, you know, this is a bearish security. I thought we're going to see a move higher. Notice like the, you know, the price range here in late November, uh, mid-November rather, really narrowed. Maybe I thought we're going to go higher. No, aggressive shorts again. So right there on as, you know, latest opportunity for an aggressive short is basically right there uh, about maybe I'll say 13th 14th of November is a nice drop afterwards simply buying or selling at the lines so another 27 percent drop um, ethereum same thing they're all this, they're all doing the same thing the cryptos are all doing the same thing except for ripple and i'll show you ripple in just a second uh this one didn't really want bounce and ethereum hit fresh low litecoin uh there's a gazillion of them out there all doing the same thing collapsing towards fresh lows here's xrp usd and i was like this is the only one that i thought oh wow maybe it'll gonna break out should have shorted it <laughs> here is xrp usd with an opportunity to sell it on the 6th 7th of november like if i was trading it i would probably short it right there on the 7th of november for a nice um let me see nice 20 percent move i believe down 20 actually 26 percent move down so overall um bearish security should be avoided and or traded on the downside that's it for this week's recap please head over to masterchesttrading.com that's masterchesttrading.com and sign up for uh, the alerts and indicators now i am finally separated them out so now you can have uh, separately indicators and separately alerts and for those who know what they're doing really you want to get both you want the alerts and the indicators and i think the price is a bargain at 29 bucks per month if you if you're signing up yearly i think you can number one at the very least avoid losses number two make nice money if you know what you're doing and i can you know help you out basically i have a very large training section here as well and you can uh, read about it as well and um, members only trading blog uh, will show all of the alerts uh, and uh, uh, current trades that we have open all right that's it for this week's recap thanks for watching if you have any questions comments uh, please write them below and also don't forget to like this video bye, -bye.